Hey guys, Steve from Gym Hub. We had a, a great question during the week. Uh, just saying, Steve, outside of marketing and the usual sort of questions, what is one less commonly spoken about attribute that makes the best gym owners the best? So to answer that, I wanted to give an example of Novak Djokovic, who uh, at the time of uh, recording this video is I think either number one or number two in the world, has I think the second highest number of Grand Slam wins in history and is a, a bit of a weapon. He's a, an amazing athlete and he's obviously been super successful. But something that he said in an interview that sort of um, stuck with me, he said, if you want to be successful and at the very top of your game, you have to be consistent across all five sets of a match, but you also have to be consistent across all games and all matches throughout a tournament. And what he meant by that is there is, um, you know, those athletes like a Nick Kyrgios or someone who has a strong serve, who has the ability to show up sometimes. And then there's other times where it has a brain explosion throws a racket, um, you know, uh, quits a game early and doesn't have that sort of consistency of high performance, which you are required to, to get to number one. So you can, um, if you compare it to the fitness industry, I see people that if you, if you said, hey, what is something you did really, really well this week? Like, how was your week going? They think back to the thing that they're best at, the thing that they're most comfortable with, and it might be their personal training session they did or the group class, and they go, wow, there was lots of people there. I was attentive. I was a bit engaging or charismatic. Uh, I had some really good feedback, and they, they sort of pat themselves on the back. But that's only one element, and what they're, they're sometimes lacking is to give you a full perspective on the other roles of a gym owner where they didn't score so well that week. Uh, where instead of like a 10 out of 10 like group fitness class, perhaps they were only a 5 out of 10 in the quality of their team meeting with their staff. Perhaps they were only a 2 out of 10 in terms of like outreach and handing out flyers and fruit and being out in the local public this week. Maybe they were a 4 out of 10 in the, the quality of the questions they asked when they were recruiting new trainers to come into the business. And, and I guess what you start to see is like a Nick Kyrgios, they've got something crushing. They're actually really talented and they do really, really well. But until they stop sort of considering themselves to be a 10 out of 10 and factor in the rest of the games, the rest of the matches, the rest of the sets, um, they, they never actually get to a, a, a number one. So, yeah, I, I love that as an analogy. It's, it, it's not like... Um, it's not a sprint. It's not like, you know, you have a, a great week and you can do well in fitness. And it's not like you can just do a good product and, and deliver a really good class and you're going to do well in fitness because there are other roles. And just like a Novak Djokovic has to be consistent over five sets and then has to do another game a couple of days later and you, you've got to possibly work through seven different opponents to even get to a Grand Slam final you've then got to be consistent throughout the year. And that's the same with a fitness business owner. We can't just like a Kyrgios go, well, we've got a great serve and, and, and give up if the rest of our game sort of falls apart or chuck a tanny or be unlikable with other coaching and staff and stuff around us, or we're not going to have that support and that consistency required to sort of move our way up the ranking. I think I think that's the difference between another like a 30 ranked in the world, Kyrgios versus a, a number one or number two in the world, like a, a Novak Djokovic.